Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, June 28th, 2020, and it's about 3.25 p.m. here in Pasadena, California. Here is the update for the last week. So Apple and Tesla are both pushing out a pretty steady stream of promotional in emails and discounts. Uh, that tells me a lot about the marketplace condition. Those are two brands at the very top of the food chain, basically. And if they are pushing out discounts and they're frequently marketing, um, that tells you quite clearly where uh, their, their sales department sees things. So I do think that tells uh, a story about the broader economy. So regarding how our um, contributions to the World Vision nonprofit work is we take 10% of every single dollar that comes in at the top line. Okay, so that's gross income, any sort, uh, times 10%. To be absolutely clear about that, that's uh, what the number's based on. It's it's based on the gross, total gross in, um, uh, not gross income, but both gross cash into the business, um, period. Okay, so uh, regarding the SEC case, uh, two two important things to know from last week. Uh, in the Lou case, uh, the decision limited. It did. There were a few different ways this could have gone. Uh, it was highly unlikely that they were going to lose. Uh, the power to to recover disgorged profit from uh, fraudulent operators or actors in the marketplace. That was not likely to happen. What was likely to happen is what happened, which is it's limited now uh, to only uh, profits, basically. So there has to be a demonstration that the activity that they're claiming is fraudulent uh, resulted in profit for the person perpetrating whatever it is they're claiming. Uh, in the case of, of their case against us, and that's clearly uh, available in the accounting information, which, by the way, that is not what was requested by the court. What was requested was to identify, are we saying that we did or did not uh, raise via sale $1.5 million? No, we did not. Uh, we, it went through donation income, and all of that's been explained previously. Um, if the request is for accounting information, that has been available. We've made that offer previously multiple times. And if that is the request, then that needs to be made specifically. And we'll be happy to turn that over. In fact, that information was prepared a long time ago and made available uh, in a prior offer to anybody who wanted it in the, in the period of time uh, waiting for the audit, which is still, we still don't have our hands on it at this point. But all the data that went into it uh, is available to uh, to the SEC if they ask for it. But what's important, and so that will show that not only uh, did that in, in, uh, money not accrue to me personally, but it went to exactly the purposes of the mission as described. And in fact, more money was spent in the form of debt and other things on my own name uh, that, that was paid on behalf of ASM that was never repaid to me. So. There is no, uh, basically what happened in this case is what they're trying to do and what they always would try to do is claim the gross amount of the claim, which is saying that all the money we ever took in uh, over this period, one and a half million dollars, was just uh, purely a fraudulent transaction and that it all went into my pocket and I spent it on, on a, a race car or something. Uh, that's not what happened. And, and secondly, they can't no longer just claim the gross amount. Okay, so if they're trying to say that money was taken fraudulently, it has to be shown that that money is actually did that and they can't just use the top line number. So very clearly, that is a weakening of their enforcement powers and it is material in our case only because it weakens their ability to, uh, to make a one and a half million dollar recovery claim because there is no uh, enormous, is what it's called to me personally, of that money. That's just simply not the case. So uh, anyhow, that's kind of getting into the weeds a bit, but do your own research. If you have legal background or you know, know somebody, look for yourself, look the case up. Uh, we, we did respond to that uh, minute order in the docket according to the guidance that we received. Uh, and so that's, that's what happened. And I want to be absolutely clear about something. Um, we are not going, this, this issue is, uh, as Alper and I discussed it a few days ago, this issue is either going to resolve quickly, uh, relatively quickly, I don't think it's going to resolve quickly no matter what, but relatively quickly, fairly towards us, or we're going to pursue it all the way to the Supreme Court. 
So if anybody thinks that there's going to be a sudden decision where um, we, we, we don't get what we're asking for or some negative uh, uh, event takes place that we're going to just stop here and that's the end of everything, that's just not true. There are a lot of things that we can do in the court. This court, district court, no, no matter what happens, and then there's the Court of Appeals, if that's not satisfactory, and then there's the Supreme Court, if that's not satisfactory. So this is not going to, this is, there's not a hair trigger event here where all of a sudden the SEC is going to do something and that's it, the game over, okay? It's going to resolve properly or it's not going to resolve. That's basically it. It's going to resolve properly and it may take some time and we're going to pursue it like we pursue everything to the end. We're not going to give up or give in or, or any of that stuff because it is our position 100% no ifs, ands, buts, or maybes about it, that we're in the right and they're in the wrong. And it's the same thing with Leon. And as far as being tenacious, you're not going to run across a group of people more tenacious than this group. So those haters of you out there that think that this is just going to suddenly be some sudden seismic event that wipes us out, you're dreaming. It isn't going to go that way. Um, all right. So that's the status of that. Uh, you can read the pleading if you want. It was sent out in a prior, uh, in a prior message. So MLB is talking about starting up on July 24th, which I think is absolutely batshit crazy, especially now that Arizona and Texas and Florida, uh, looks like Nevada won't be far behind, are going to go back on lockdown. Those are some of the locations of the stadiums that they wanted to use. This is just pure greed and, and impatience writ large. I would, If they do actually start it up, I would expect that it will shut right back down very shortly thereafter. It, this is an absolutely insane idea. The schedule doesn't make any sense. The public is not going to understand this. And if you disappoint them, okay, if any of you guys out there are listening, if you disappoint the fans, and right now their head is all over the place, I don't think it's focused on sports, uh, frankly. Uh, it'd be nice to have it back, but they've got bigger, bigger problems. And if you bring it back and screw it up, then you're going to lose your fans for a very long time, whether you're ready for them or not. So I would suggest you take that very seriously in this thing you're cooking up, which was announced like a, a week ago or so, or less than that, a few days ago, and then just a day or two later, these huge spikes in the very location. I mean, it's, it's, it's just foolishness. And I don't know how your risk management people aren't aren't showing you that reality. Uh, it's just crazy. Um, Q2 2020 uh, quarterly dividend payments are due in, two, uh, well, it, it'll pay on the 1st of July, which is uh, next week. This is something that no fantasy sports book or any other configuration will ever be able to say. It's impossible. Our email open rates are still rising. Uh, that's good to see. People are uh, paying attention, and, and more of them are paying attention all the time. The gambling faction is going to try over the coming months to try to get you to think that gambling is a safe thing. It's not a safe thing, just like clean coal is not. There's no such thing. It's a lie. Uh, but you're going to see an effort like you haven't seen in a while, maybe ever before. Um, New York City Marathon canceled again. That's just um, an indicator of where we are. New York City Marathon canceled. Oh, sorry, I just said that. Locking down again. So, uh, yep, Texas, Florida shooting off their mouth with their, you know, oh, we're just going to do it our way and, and, and it's all just a big fraud and all the rest of that. And got out of the gate early and it didn't take very well we're not going to shut back down no we know what we're doing over here everything's fine and then wham okay so i don't know why any of this is a mystery a mystery i mean it's really really simple cause and effect it's really simple cause and effect a political map the boundaries on a political map state boundaries country boundaries political boundaries okay they do not uh count for germs okay germs do not stop at the state line and say, oh, well, you know, there's a different policy in Arizona than there is in California. It, there's going to be no end to this until the science is followed and a national policy is put in place, period. Okay, so ASM has paid out about $150,000 uh, since the pilot market started operation in roughly four years of operation. So that's about 10% uh, of all gross intake has gone back out. This is the people that are, and then there's another 10% that has gone to the World Vision. 
Uh, this is to people who did not have a stake and don't have stock grants and all that sort of thing. And uh, that's, that's the ones that have received that. So it's a false claim to say that we've never paid anybody out. It's a false claim. It's a lie. Uh, Trump v. Sports. So we have that domain name, and I think everybody probably can see where we're going with that. So I'm not going to get into that here as, as far as the friction because it's, it's front and center headline news every day. But we're just going to put a placeholder in that because um, I'm going to get to using that here later in the year as we get closer to Election Day. Uh, anybody who wants to promote gambling as a great plan for fixing the COVID-19 budget crisis and all the rest of that, all I have to say to that idea is two words, Atlantic City. One more time, Atlantic City. Do your homework. If you don't know that, chances are there are some of you that don't because it's far enough in the rearview mirror. So if you're entertaining that notion of how your budget is going to be turned around in this country by enabling gambling, then research Atlantic City and our occupant of the White House's participation in that. Nike surprise quarterly loss. Um, again, that uh, speaks to the condition of the broader economy. These are, again, uh, first-tier brands that don't do this kind of thing. And certainly Nike is, uh, is not one to lose money at all, uh, very rarely. So um, that's just general softness of the economy. Pilot market conversion. So a reminder, how does that work? Uh, in the same way that the Fed is injecting stimulus into the economy, that's what bonus margin is. Um, at the point of conversion, we don't have that set yet. That comes after we get the test case of raising money for a team out there. And then that's when we bring back in the, the, the we merge the market back in, the pilot market. But think of it like this. The Fed has expanded the balance sheet. I know you've heard that. We've done the same thing. You know, the Fed prints money. They've said it, okay? They've said it in the media. It's to, to shocking to me that they actually finally, after all the years I've been watching this, which is about 40 years, because I, I mean, a little actually more than that, um, you know, when, even when I was a kid. So they don't, they never admitted that in the past, even though I figured it out a long time ago. Uh, most people figured it out. It's no economics at all, but they've never actually admitted it. So uh, they just print it, you know, they increase it. F7 or in a terminal somewhere. Okay, so ASM's bonus margin acts like that. Uh, once the conversion process and date are established and announced, then we will sub we'll be subtracting the bonus margin out. So what will happen is you'll have a sum account value. That account value will be the sum of your sports shares and the cash balance. total. It's your total account value. value. Sometimes you'll see that in an email that goes out. Uh, that is the number that is the is the starting number. Then there will be a divider to basically subtract out all of the bonus margin. So say it's a $100,000 uh, account value and the multiplier is 1,000. Okay, so you divide 100,000 by 1,000, right? 100. Okay, so that's what you're left with. That will then be the starting point to determine the conversion of how that value gets back into the final uh, exempt or, or regulated market. So, you know, stimulus in our case is bonus margin, activate the market, get it to trade, bring in customers, and then at the point of conversion, extract the bonus margin out, you know, by divide by, because, you know, the, the, the bonus margin is a multiply by, and then that will be the basis of those, of the uh, Ace's idea, which I think is the, as we get closer, we'll nail down completely, but I think this is the, probably the best way to do it is you will, whatever that final value number is, that will become your buying power or some function of that number, okay, becomes your buying power in the new cash fully regulated or fully exempt uh, final market. So that's, that's how that works. Uh, market maker grants. So further to um, you know, our claims, we've been granting stock in, in this company since the start. I mean, that's, a, that's done. Everybody does that. Okay. Some do grants, some do options as part of the sweat equity. So 
we, we've been doing that for insiders, for people that have done work for us, like on the simulators and all that. That's a normal function. So we, we haven't stopped doing that. We still have those uh, for the Market Maker program. That has never stopped working. That's still there. So my point is, is that to, uh, to separate out the, the fundraising programs as just that was the only time we ever did something like that with grants, it's just wrong. I mean, we did it before. Uh, we do it now without any cash take, take changing hands, just as sweat equity. So uh, I, again, that's just another point uh, to be made if, if, we, if we do have to go further in, in arguing this case. With the SEC, I just I don't I don't see I don't see the difference. Um, to uh, okay, so there there is a, I think it was a Yahoo News story. Uh, finally, there's a, a reputable source that says looks like two trillion dollar a year deficits for ten years, uh, twenty trillion. I said it, it would double the national debt, and I said it would take uh, ten years. So the only thing that they uh, got wrong here is the timeline. It's actually going to happen in five. It's not going to happen in ten. It's going to happen in five. Uh, Europe, so we made it to the number one position uh, on the planet for COVID infections and deaths. That's really something to be proud of, um, to the point that now Europe has a travel ban. So we're now banned as a travel country. Uh, if that doesn't tell you something's terribly wrong, I don't, I don't know what's going to do it. Um, DraftKings, okay, so look. If the only thing you care about is to cook up some way to screw people over and steal money from the public, then great, that's what they're doing. The facts are this. They have never made any money as a company. Okay? If you want to challenge me on that, then produce the financial statements. Otherwise, shut up because it, it's just not true. They have raised and spent more than a billion dollars and lost it so far. They have no profitability presently or in the future and no projections for it, just happy talk about how it's going to be so great in the future. That's all they have. And they're running out of cash. So what they did is they raised. Now they added to the round, which is clever. It's, it's a good thing to do and there's a lot of excitement. So they added to the round and they cashed out $600 million. Okay. Now in a normal IPO, you would not be able to do this. But since, I mean, look, the nature of the gambling business is trickery. So why is it not going to change at any part of the equation? A, they have no legal basis. Nationwide, they have no legal basis. A, a loss of federal prohibition on one statute, Wire Act, very much still in force and argued last week. Okay? So that's still moving. Okay? No legal basis on a federal level. None. Zero. Okay? Zero. If you can show me where, give me a legal opinion, a nationwide, okay, smart guys, people out there that think that you know what you're talking about, or one of you guys in DraftKings, or one of you guys in any of these operators, I want to see your legal opinion that it says that you can operate nationwide in the United States without breaking state or federal law. Please send that. Please send that legal opinion. I want to see it. It doesn't exist because it isn't true. It doesn't exist because it isn't true. Okay? So you have no legal basis. You somehow con the SEC into letting you do a reverse IPO, which allowed your insiders to cash out $600 million without a lockup period. No profitability, no legal certainty. Insiders got out. Now, if that's a victory, okay, then you're a victorious organization. If that is the measurement stick, is that you got out, you cashed out, then congratulations. But you didn't build a business, okay? You built a giant scheme. And there's a whole bunch of those in the market right now, like Wirecard, okay? Okay? The C is going to come out. That money that you raise, that billion dollars, you're going to need every bit of it over the next 12 months to fight legal battles and to try to market your trash to the public. The public already knows about gambling. So you've stated that you're going to market more. Do you think that they don't get it? <laughs> they, don't, they, they need more convincing? Do you not remember what happened with the DFS stuff the first time around and what that did to your reputation? Do you think that marketing right now to people in the middle of a pandemic that is not only is it not over, it's getting worse, is, is the right move? So what are you going to do when the, million, when the billion dollars runs out? 
You're going to go back? Because I saw what happened to the stock price when the market finally caught on. Sad thing is the public doesn't catch on. See, it took them a couple days. So the price goes up to, what, 45 and then drops to 30 in the low 30s. That's the part where the public figured out that you fucked them over and they're trying to get out. So I'm not impressed, okay? Not impressed. And when you're ready to have a debate about sports investing versus sports gambling, let me know. So whack-a-mole is the new mode for COVID-19 uh, abatement. That's, I already covered that. It's, it's not going to be, it's going to be, that's what you're going to get <laughs> until, until you have a, a, a national policy coming from, from Washington, D.C. that uh, it affects all the states and puts them on the same footing. It's just going to keep going until you have a vaccine, which yeah, end of the year, my ass. OK, I'm not taking that vaccine. OK, you can forget it. So it takes a while. OK, it takes a while and it takes a while for the vaccine to be proven out. Do the research. Years is the shortest period of time that any deployable vaccine has been made available and functional. It's taken years to get one out large enough like this in the past. So. It's all just happy talk bullshit. Uh, wire, wire card. So uh, yeah, the open rates. Open rates are exceeding 75%. So of the entire list, more than three quarters, that's more than 12,000 total. More than three quarters of the uh, list is opening messages at some point, not all the time, but at some point they're opening some messages. At least 75% have opened them along the last uh, about six months. Uh, wire card collapse again. You're going to see so much of this stuff as the as the 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 sea goes out, and 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 you can see that um, there's no nobody's wearing any clothes. Um, you know the wire card collapse is just another in a long string of crypto bullshit. Uh, do your own research there. Uh, sports share order. So I was finishing up. Um, I, I do have the currency uh, albums are going to be ready to ship out. Um, the prizes, the drawings, um, all of the, the stuff that's owed from um, about February, late January, February, right after the lock, the main thrust of the lockdown period till I stopped the site. That All of those orders and all of those other uh, materials uh, I was preparing today and one of the pieces of machinery broke down. So I, I have to order a part. I ordered the part. I'll get it um, maybe 10 days. You know, things are not moving as fast as they should. And then I'll finish it up and send everything out. But for sure, um, for sure in the next, I mean, two weeks, it shouldn't be more than that, maybe sooner, as soon as I get the stuff. And then I'll, I'll send a, a snapshot of everything. So, and then uh, everybody that's owed a package will get the, the confirmation numbers. And then finally, um, so this is for next weekend. I'm not going to reveal this now, but um, any of you that were at the first uh, Hollywood party will remember this book. It's actually in the video, uh, the signature book for uh, the sports vote. So we're going to have a new installment uh, next weekend for 4th of July weekend. So uh, please stay tuned. If you are uh, interested in helping support uh, our work, you want to if you want to contribute to the non then, uh, you know, please write a message to support at ASM free and uh, we'll get the information to you. So Thank you very much and have a nice weekend. Bye now.